Well, uh, obviously, we got to move uh, past a very, very tough loss and um, uh, a big game this week. So the rivalry games uh, on the horizon, one that we uh, all uh, take extremely serious around here and one that uh, uh, we cherish to be part of. I know I'm speaking on behalf of our players and coaches. Uh, it's a sign of a team that can move past uh, a very difficult uh, uh, Saturday and, and move forward. So um, yesterday at a team meeting, and uh, as you can imagine, that not everyone's stomach was there. And um, it'd be really disappointing if it wasn't there. Um, today, you'd like to have seen most of the guys, a lot of the guys already, the, the real guys that play a lot, and then they're moving on. And uh, it's always good. Uh, how, do you deal with, uh, how do you deal with disappointment? Um, the way we're created, and I don't want to go over it really dramatic here, but you get around family and people you care about, and that's uh, uh, you know a sleepless night on Saturday night, and then you start to feel better when you see your guys show up again. So that's what, uh, just personally speaking, and, and the guys I've spoken to. So uh, move forward. Um, I know I'm going to get a bunch of questions about Zeke. Uh, Zeke has always been an extremely loyal person, a great competitor. He had an infection in his uh, leg early in the week, and uh, just a very emotional week. Obviously, his last time, you know, he's a, a very well thought of junior, and um, you, you know, he gets a microphone stuck in his face, and, and uh, obviously, we do not condone that and encourage it. I always, uh, our rule is always talk about your teammates and move on. And uh, he came to see me. We had a very long discussion. He's great, and he apologized and he said, uh, you know, they didn't have the whole interview in there, and I'm. I, regardless, I'm not going to listen to the whole interview, and and that doesn't mean a whole lot to me. It does mean a lot that uh, it's causing attention. So we squashed it as a team. We squashed it uh, as Zeke. But there's, I want to make clear, there's never been. Zeke's been a good student, very loyal, incredible football player, most selfless player, one of the most selfless players I've ever coached and been around. So I imagine we'll get uh, hit with that a little bit. So we've got to move forward and uh, we get better and get ready for play a very good team. Up on that, um, how concerned were you that, that that came out? I think you kind of just answered it, but where, how do you gauge the culture of trust? Because usually those things don't happen in a vacuum. Maybe this was an isolated incident. I don't know, but very isolated incident. We have a three-year bank on Zeke, you know, and uh, plus Zeke has been uh, Zeke is a very honest guy. Uh, frustration, anger, all that probably mounted up a lot. Like uh, I couldn't disagree with him with his comments. Uh, that he should have got the ball a little bit more, uh, but that's not the place to do it. He knows that, but I, I've seen it. I don't know unless this is your first rodeo. Have you ever seen an uh, emotional athlete ever go or coach? I mean, that's for those of you that ever played or coached. That happens. That's so why I always like to decompress for at least a few minutes because I've seen some things that I'm not very proud of, and uh, I'm not saying it's not true. I'm saying there's, that's not the forum. To have those conversations, and Zeke's got, like I said, a three-year bank. So I don't want—I know I'm probably going to get another 64 questions on it, but um, it's done. We got a really good team coming up that we're playing, and we got to move forward. Does it force you to look at the culture, whether it's a trust culture or whatever that's going on, or is that? You, well, how do you gauge the? the I just told you it's—it's. It's, uh, we're going to try to go do the best. With, the guys had a lot of. Uh, uh, I mean. I don't want to, once again, undervalue a loss. It's been OK. We've we got to find a way to get another win now. When you start talking about culture, it's, I kind of stung a little bit. I said, yeah, I'm always go gauging the culture. And I gauge it on how they practice, how they show up. Did they play hard in the game? Uh, is there a good uh, chemistry in the units and those type of things? So I'm always gauging that. Front row, Bill. When you look at the tape, I'm sure it was pretty painful to do that. But you said on, on Saturday that you were not going to when you watched the play calling again and you analyzed how you guys called the game, what, what did you think? Oh, not very good. Have to do better. And at some point, I mean, obviously you're the head coach and you could have said, I want you to do this, I want you to do that. Do you regret not having done that? Yes. No. Front row, Dave. Coach, you mentioned you don't, you, that you don't disagree with Ezekiel's post game comments about the 12 carries, only 12 carries. Did him. The low amount of carries was it because of the infection that he had in his leg missing no, practice? No, no, it was the way. It, I mean, the, the carries he did have. If you notice the defenses, 
and that and we were it seemed like the whole freaking game we had the wind in our face too i mean it was uh um when he was being the ball was given to him there's a lot of people right there and that was all i kept thinking about and it was rather obvious and you're hoping to get the wind at your back and get be able to get out of your we were backed up and wind at your back and and they were keying on the best player in the field zeke elliott and that's uh but hindsight you know feed him and um he has a way of making yards you're involved in play calling, as, as we all know, as you said after the game. Will you be even more involved in play calling going forward this season? Yeah. Can you expound on that? Just Not really. I'm still going through it. Back row left, uh, Jared. Robert, just a thought on Michigan. Uh, as you watched them throughout the year, maybe on cross tape or just in your study with you yesterday, are you surprised? Or, or uh, just what is your reaction to the way that they've grown throughout the season in the first year with a new coach? Oh, I'm not surprised at all. I think they have excellent players. They're well coached. I've always, you know, checked their recruiting. I remember hearing, well, you know, they just don't have the personnel. I'm thinking, wait a minute, they have great personnel. They, they, they always have great personnel. Uh, whether they're always playing great or whatever, that's a different answer. And uh, obviously, they're playing very well right now. Front row, Tim. Yeah, Urban. As, as you, uh, as you look at it, was was Saturday. That's sort of a microcosm of you guys trying to figure out what you wanted to do this year offensively. You're, I mean, with all these weapons available to you, trying to spread the ball, get guys involved. Is did it kind of catch up with you guys? You think Saturday? A little bit. I options? think the I think the uh, you know the the elements uh, were also we, we wanted to throw the ball in that game. You know, we wanted to. We we had success against Michigan State last year throwing the ball for 300 yards. You know, that was kind of going into it that was the because they're very good defensive front very good and there's how do you get them off you and all you come out there in pregame warm up and you're like oh no and uh and it just kind of we did you know we tried to we just missed we're, we're not hitting them dropping them and yeah. and it was a tough situation so you kind of have to take that part out of it until point and because you still have to be able to function in the elements a little bit and uh so yes and no i mean yes that that to answer your question is yes, but that, that wasn't the only thing. Yeah. And the other thing, you know, Joey obviously had those moments where he jumped and they yeah. jumped. And, uh, what, uh, just defensively, you were sitting here a week ago very high on your defense and stuff. What did you see? It looked like they hammered away in the middle and finally got some things done. And what yeah. did you see? What's what's the challenge for your defense this week? Well, yeah, they, uh, you know, their, their quarterback was out and they put a runner in there and that hurt us, uh, quarterback run game. Um, you know, I felt like the fatigue set in in the fourth quarter a little bit. A lot of it was because of lack of offensive production, and the possession time was so high. Um, and we could have done better, but overall, I'm, I'm, you know, our defense, I think, is they're, they're, we had a, a bad punt where the wind blew the ball right as he was getting ready to hit the punt, and uh, um, and they stopped him. You know, so there's been some very. Uh, I, I'm I, I'm pleased with our defense, and I hope they play as well. As we continue the season. Front row right, Austin. Urban, I know a big part of your uh, program and culture is, is honesty. You heard about that. How does that work with a player? Let's say he wasn't in a press conference. Could that is that something that Z could have come said? To the team? Sure. You, is that okay? That team? You, no, me team or or yeah, yeah, yeah. That that it's it's. Uh, I've been in in situations where you're hearing a lot of that. You know, if I'm a wide receiver right now, I'm. You know, what's, but there's a there's a lot of trust built up over years, and uh, absolutely, when you say honesty, it's just the forum is not. And our guys have been pretty good. You know, I'm trying to think over the last few years, our guys have been, and there could have been situations every every game. If you find it, you can. If you want to find it, you can find a disgruntled or someone. Not, uh, disgruntled is probably not the appropriate word, but you know, just someone that has emotional. You know, and especially guys that have earned their keep around here. Absolutely, there is conversation. The it's called very respectful conversation. One other thing that came out of it, it was the first time we heard him say that he wouldn't be returning next year. The last week, Joey kind of hinted that that was the way he was leaning. Cardale, you know, has posted some things saying the same thing. It seems like these guys have that on their mind, and it might be impossible for that to not be a consideration. How, how are you managing it with them? It's starting to get to the end of the year, and now three of them are already kind of tipping their hand. Oh well, one way is just you know don't let them meet, take their phones away, and they're they're off limits. That's one way, and I've thought about that. That's probably not fair, you know. Um, 
I trust those guys. You know, Zeke, once again, now, the people you have me talking about are very emotional, very guys that are, you know, and the lo one thing loss is a loss. Uh, it happens, I guess, is, uh, you know, your, the emotions seep out sometimes. So I'm not, I, I want to play really hard Saturday, get ready to get this team ready to go. The names you just mentioned are wonderful, loyal kids to this program have done probably about as, you know, I mean, there are some great historians of this program uh, that could tell you more, but I can't imagine those names you just mentioned have done much more. One won a national championship as a quarterback, 11-0 as a starter, and then the others are two of the best players ever to wear a scarlet and gray. And they're good students and good guys. So, so I, I think, you know, I've got, got to make sure we're doing this all week and, and get the laser lights that's on our preparation. Tip on not starving or something like that? No, I mean, not at all. Second row right, Dave? Herman, a little off topic. I know you only spent a couple months there, but being born, obviously, in Toledo, um, on the front lines of this rivalry, uh, your, your first house address was actually less than a mile from the Michigan border. You grew up in Ashtabula, but how, how do you identify with Toledo? It's, obviously, it's always your birthplace. Yeah, that was a drive-by, though, I guess. I don't, I don't, I, I asked that question, too, and I got this, well, we weren't there very long. You got my address, huh? Wow. <laughs> uh, credit card number two, gotta watch out. Um, I'd, I'd love to, you know, I spent time at Bowling Green. That's probably the closest I've ever got to Toledo and understanding Northwest Ohio. And uh, I do understand the, the value of the players, the pro prospects, the Heisman Trophy winners that have come out of that area and great players. Uh, you know, the Toledo, Sandusky, that whole area. So I'm not sure the question, but no, I don't know if the parents ever took you to the old house or told you anything about the time. No. Far right over here, Pete. Urban, uh, I'm curious. Nick Saban made some comments after you guys beat him last year talking about the difficulty of keeping guys who could go early to the NFL focused. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering, again, that Saturday manifest the way did, but what, what is that like to manage when you're, you're running a program with so many guys who one year in 09, we had 12 guys sending their paperwork, 12. And that's, that causes a little uh, anxiety issues for the coaching staff. Not because, uh, first of all, if you have 12, that means really well done recruiting and prepping guys. What it is, especially with the new era of recruiting, how everybody's, a lot of them committed already. Uh, so the two areas of concern are staying focused on the, on the task at hand, and that's playing a very good team. And the second one is just the whole recruiting. Yeah, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare just as far as, uh, not as bad as a nightmare as having zero, that you, there's no players ever getting drafted. That's, I imagine, a much more significant nightmare. Um, but it is, it's not easy. And I, I can see it, I can, you know, and it's, it wasn't just last year. I mean, this, year's, this year seems to be more that I have to just make sure we're staying focused. And, and they're good. The good thing is we, they're really good guys. You know, I don't, but human, there's human nature out there, too. Uh, when you look at the, the job that they've done at Michigan this year, you've gone to three programs and had pretty distinct turnarounds in your first year in your history. How impressed are you with how they've changed the way they do things on the field and the competitive spirit? Oh, very, very impressed. Uh, not surprised because I think they're very good coaches. And I think I've always, you know, I just re recruit against them. They're, they're very good recruiters. I, the previous staff was excellent recruiters, and they're very good players up there. So I'm not, when someone says, are you surprised that they have very good players up there? Not at all. I mean, for those of you who've been covering this game, just check out the last few games we played them. I mean, it is just swinging as hard as you possibly can against very good players. Back right, uh, Mark. Uh, Coach, uh, you've worked, I think, with at least two of the coaches <coughs> at Michigan, uh, Cook Madison and uh, T.J. Durkin. Um, I don't know, what, what can you tell us about them and any, any particular stories? Uh, good, good guys, good friends. Uh, uh, D.J. was a graduate assistant for me at Bowling Green. We hired him in Florida, so we know him and his family very well. And uh, Greg's a lifelong friend and good coaches. Right behind you, Clay. What do you recall about 86, you as the G.A. and Harbaugh, the quarterback? I do remember that, and uh, uh, I remember us missing a wide left right at the end as the clock ticked zero. He won't want me to name his name, but I remember the kicker's name, a great kid. 
I'm certainly not going to say that. Far left, Bill. Urban, I know in the in the receiver room you have, <clears throat> excuse me, a, a ton of great athletes with Braxton and, and Jalen and Dontre and Curtis. Those are all guys who are also making a transition or have made a transition from a different position. How have you seen their development maybe along this season, and how might that be affecting the passing game? Oh no, they're you know we have had some injuries, uh, but their their development's fine. We just got to do a better job of getting them the ball. I think Saturday was the, the fourth time you guys been shut out in the first quarter. Five times you haven't had a touchdown in the first quarter. Um, as you assess everything, the slow starts, is there anything you can attribute that to? Is that concerning for you? It's concerning, and it's uh, you know part of this whole evaluation that I'm going through right now and uh, after the season in, in great detail. Uh, just disappointing, and that's not our history. And we've got to evaluate why and, and um, just don't have much time to do that right now. A couple more questions. Back, uh, Bill. Urban, you talked fairly recently about the uh, game in 2011 when everything was, so many players have been suspended here and still was a 40-35, I think, was the score, and how they took you to 42-41. How hard is it going to be to kind of restrike the match after, after Saturday night to have Oh, I have a lot of confidence in the in our guys. You know, this is a very invested, uh, they just had something happen to them they haven't had in, I think Jerry said, 400 some days. You got hit right in the gut. And uh, so I'm going to, that's, that's my job. And that's our coaching staff's job and our leader's job to make sure that there is focus and, and uh, attention to detail. The good thing is you're playing a very good team. Uh, second row left, Ari. Uh, Coach, uh, last year you guys, uh, the Virginia Tech game, had a very large recruiting weekend that, for a game that didn't go real well again this year. Michigan State, you guys had a lot of people in town, a lot of recruits. It was a very influential weekend for you. The weather, the way the game went, a lot of things didn't go your way. Can you explain how yesterday went um, from a tactical standpoint, and how do you deal at the end, especially now that you're closer to signing day than you were Virginia Tech, having such an influential Well, weekend? we only have a few spots left, and so a lot of these are to get the no guys. Some of the guys we just didn't know very well, and obviously with the, you know, the rain and the loss, it's not the ideal like the other other uh, games we've had. So it's tough, but I mean, that's not the first time we've all been down that road. You, you know, Ohio State's a wonderful place that, uh, um, you know, you win whatever you want, 23 or 24 games, you lose one and, you know, get going. Um, the hard thing is just trying to have that good demeanor when you're just meeting with, you know, that's the hardest thing to come in and put on the recruiting face at uh, 9 o'clock the next morning. Is, that's, that's a challenge. Have to have three breakfasts, like you said, and all that stuff. I mean, you have a lot of. There's probably an element of gambling to this, where you have to, you know, pick a big game and an atmosphere and stuff. When things don't go your like right, the right way, is it a setback for you? I mean. Uh, surprisingly, because I've studied that, because I always uh, I started that down when I was in Florida, because we lost to Auburn one time, and it was, I mean, biggest weekend of the year, and and we've had other ones where you beat a rival or something, and it's and it's very little. A lot of times that won't make the decision. I'm not saying it doesn't sometimes, but uh, there is no statistical data to say don't be so, you know, only bring them in games that you really should win. So we, we, we err more on the side of atmosphere. Was it a good day yesterday on Sunday when you, I mean, how did it go? Well, I don't think I'm allowed to talk about recruiting. It was fine. Last question over here, Doug. Breakfasts were fine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Urban, whether it's, yeah. Looking at the Michigan State game, or just looking ahead to Michigan and what your offense needs to do against a good defense. I, I know every year is different, but there's a lot of guys on this offense who've had success, and these are successful offensive players. Just 11 games in, like, just what is it that just isn't quite there that in a game like that you only score 14 points and go through weather and everything? Like, yeah. Are you still wondering? Yeah, uh, wondering is probably not the correct word if you're the head coach. You should probably have more more uh, firm answer. Uh, if it was something that firm or singular, you'd fix it immediately. And um, there's a variety of things. We're just not, uh, we're not operating at maximum capacity is the key word. And we're still, you know, 10 and 1. So the, what I'm doing right now is um, every ounce of ability, every ounce of energy and focus is going on trying to win this game. There'll be a time that we didn't score in the first quarter five times. We didn't, uh, don't worry, we'll, That'll be flipped over upside down, inside out. Not now, because our focus is on this. And it's not as simple as what's well, just one thing or two things, or we'd fix it.
the end? Obviously, again, you're only worried about winning this game. But you understand the big picture. You you were in the around media for a year when you weren't coaching. When something like with what happened with Zeke happens, that's that's what people are talking about today out in the world. And I know you can't control it. But you worry about your guys, but. With your past experiences, can something like that have an effect on a program? Sure. How people view it or what people think of Ohio State now? Oh, I don't. I, uh, it's just in the locker room. Uh, this will be an old story. You know, if we find a way to win this game, I imagine we won't be talking about this much longer. And uh, if it was a person that had a history, or if there was some some underlying, you know, talking about the third leading rusher. So there's been, you know, some very good stuff going on in that. I, I'm. I knew I'd get it today, uh, but it's, it's a closed, sealed, and it's sealed uh, as far as our team and the team room is concerned, the locker room. And uh, the only time they'll hear that, I'm sure, because I trust our guys. If I had, and I've not always trusted our guys. You know, and I, I don't usually say it like that, but I think you guys get a feel when I have a true love and respect for a group of guys, and this group we do. And that kid you're talking about, he's one of my favorite all times. Uh, the Elliott and Meyer family, like I made a comment, that's, that's a 30-year relationship coming up. Uh, especially with his mom and dad too, and his two sisters. So, it's it's sealed. He's good to go, and uh, we're going to do our best to get ready to play this week.